Hello there, welcome back to the channel. My name's Shane, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at putting the components back into the right-hand ramshaft bracket here. The high control push rod, the depth control push rod, the bracket that goes on, there's a spring that fits up under there. And we've got our components over here ready to go in. Here's that bracket, the spring that fits into it, the high control push rod right there, the depth control push rod, spring, all the different components that go in and we'll get right into it on this one. In today's video, my hands are gonna be in the way quite a bit. I'm gonna apologize for that in advance. There's nothing really I can do about it. This is very tight quarters, and in some cases, I'm gonna need both my hands in there. All right, we'll start out by putting the bracket back in. This is the bracket, and the short bolt goes on the bottom right here. There are two bolts associated with this bracket. The long one goes up here, the short one goes here. I am going to go ahead and put the depth control push rod into the bracket because it's difficult if not impossible to get it in after the bracket's installed. The depth control push rod has a roll pin there on the bottom. That roll pin faces towards you and keeps it from going up through the bracket there. Later on in the installation, I'm going to go ahead and show you this now, there's a ball on a component here. That ball right there fits into that hole on the depth control push rod. We'll see that in a few minutes when I put it in. I'm going to approach the reinstallation of the bracket here by kind of doing the same thing you do with a screw on the end of a screwdriver, kind of holding your finger against it, but instead I'll be holding my finger up against the depth control push rod to keep it from falling out. I've got a short socket on here. These, this is a half inch socket for the bolt heads, and so I've kind of got it in this position right here, held in place with my finger. It's pretty easily moved around, and what I'm going to try to do is get this bolt into that hole down there on the first or second shot without anything falling down. All right, once you've got it in there, hold it in place. Get some threads started. You're not wanting to get it tight in there, you just want to get the bolt started. we've got to pass the height control push rod in. And notice that I've still got my finger on the depth control. We can still move the bracket around, which is what's needed. The way I do this, I don't know if this is right or not, but this is the way I do it. I come in with a spring, set it in place. And with the bracket tilted to the right just a little bit, it gives you enough room to, there's enough headroom in there to get the height control push rod in. Go. See it sitting on the spring there. All right, while I've still got that held in with my finger, find a large flat headed screwdriver and I'm going to pry down on this height control push rod, sliding it underneath the cam there. I hope you can see this. Once you've done that, you can take your flat-headed screwdriver and put it up underneath the depth control, and then you can be able to remove your finger at that point. Grab a pair of locking pliers or hemostats or something and go right there and lock those into place. You feel when you've got it started in the hole. And just snug these up. And to test it, make sure everything's in correctly. Undo your clamp or take your screwdriver out and this I don't know what to call this, but this device right here should raise and lower the depth control push rod with no problem whatsoever. Just like so. Once you've got that in there, once you verify that everything is moving the way it's supposed to, push down a little bit on the height control push rod, make sure it'll go down into its slot. Nothing's bound up. You can then tighten everything up or tighten these two bolts up. Okay. 
Next, I'm gonna go ahead and put the sensing unit cable back in and the two nuts that go on the end of this. This is a brand new sensing unit cable. I had to buy it because my other, my other one broke. It had rusted into the cable head. And I'll pull it out enough to where I can work on it out here. This little metal piece is what fits in this, and you can't really see it, but you see the crescent there? This fits into that crescent. Go ahead and slide that on. And then there are two nuts. One is a regular nut, and the other is a lock nut. These are 5 sixteenths, I believe. Yes, 5 sixteenths. So I'll screw on a nut, and then screw on the other one. Two five sixteenths wrenches and get that lock nut in place. Tightened against the nut. There we go. I believe that's good enough. I'll pull it back through and kind of get it in place right there. This next part is to put this spring on the top of the depth control push rod and the associated stud that's right up here. I'll show you that here. If you take a look, there's a stud right there. You put the top of the spring through that stud and it holds up that depth control push rod. We're actually going to put the spring through the depth control push rod first uh, and then I'm actually going to stick my big screwdriver back in here to lift up the depth control push rod. Kind of wedge it in place. And then we will hook on to the top of the depth control push rod first. And then we will hook it to the top of this stud. Just like so. If you need to, you can use a pair of needle nose or something to get up in here and pry this end of the spring on through the hole there. I'm not sure if you can actually see that or not, but maybe you can. Yeah, you can see that pretty well now that I've got a flashlight on. Good deal. We're in. All right, I think that does it for everything I wanted to show you here today. We've got the bracket reinstalled, the push rods back in, height control, depth control, springs in. Sensing unit cable is in, uh, at least partially in. I'm not going to worry about the other end of it right here because I don't have the sensing unit on just yet. So we'll cover that adjustment once we get the sensing unit back on. And I'll also cover the adjustment for the cam here when I do the video on the rest of the adjustments. This is adjustment number three, and I'll have a separate video for this plus the adjustment for the quadrant once I get that back on back installed. So. Yeah, we're done here. This should have been a fairly quick video, I hope. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching and have a great day.